Welcome back to Average S. Today's question is leak code 39, combination sum. So given an array of distinct integers, candidates, and a target integer target, return a list of all unique combinations of candidates with the chosen numbers summed to target. You may return the combinations in any order. So the same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. Two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different. So it's guaranteed that the number of unique combinations that sum up to target is less than 150 combinations for the given input. So we have candidates of 2, 3, 6, 7 with a target of 7. So we need to work out all possible combinations removing duplicates of these candidates that add up to the target of 7. And the output is 2, 2, 3 and 7. There are only two combinations in this example. So for this solution today, we are going to be looking at the DP solution, not the recursive solution. So if you want to check out the recursive solution, then jump on to the other video where I explain that. Within the DP solution, we have sums. And these are all the sums up to target. So it's current target of 0, current target of 1, 2, all the way up to the target of 7. And then down here, down on the left side, we have candidates. So all the potential candidates that we can choose from. Now this DP array is going to be based on a 2D array, but it can be simplified into a single array. And that is what our code solution will show. But for simplicity and for readability, we are going to utilize this 2D array. So what this DP solution is doing is we're going through each individual sum and we are working out the total number of ways from these candidates that we can make these sums. And by doing that, we can calculate the target of seven by utilizing the solutions to previous targets. So initially, let's start off at zero. So we're at sum zero. Can two go into zero? No, it can't. So we can just leave this as an empty array. Can two go into one? No, it can't. So we can leave this as an empty array. Can two go into two? Yes, it can. But we also need to check previous sums because dynamic programming is just utilizing the solutions of previously calculated sums in order to calculate the current sum. So we need to use the previous sums that we've calculated. So if we have a look at candidates, which is equal to two and the sum at two, if we subtract candidates from sum, we get the value of zero. And we look in this to see whether there are any previous values which we need to add here first. But as we can see, it's an empty array. So we leave it empty and then we just append onto it. Or we just add onto the end two. Now let's move on to three. Can two go into three? Yes, it can. 3 minus 2 is 1. This is empty. So 2 cannot make 3. We don't have a value in 1, so we cannot make 3 from this. So we leave this empty. Can 2 go into 4? Yes, it can. So 4 minus the candidate of 2, so 4 minus the candidate of 2 is equal to 2. And right here, we have the value of 2 in here. So let's add the previous value, which is going to be equal to 2. So that's this value here. And then let's add on this candidate here. Let's move over to five. Is two less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. So we know that two can go into five. Five minus two, so five minus the candidate is equal to three. Three is empty. So we cannot make five out of just two. So we need to leave this empty. Let's move over to six. Can two go into six? Yes, it can. Two is less than or equal to six. So let's do six minus two, which is equal to four. As you can see, we have values in here. So we need to add these to this array first. So let's add the previous values, of two and two, and then add the new value, the candidate at position i. Then let's move over to seven. Two is less than or equal to seven. Seven minus two is equal to five. There is nothing within five, so we cannot make seven just from two. Okay, let's move on to three. So three is going to be empty here, here, and here because three is not less than or equal to any of these values. Then at three, three goes into three. So we check at three goes into three exactly once. So we can add three in here. We move over to four. Three is less than or equal to four. So we check four minus three, which is one. There is nothing within these arrays. So we cannot make four from just three. So this stays empty. Five. Let's have a look. So three is less than or equal to five. Yes. Five minus three goes to two. We have no value within this array, but we have a value within this array. So we need to add that to this array. So two, and then we also need to add the candidate three, which gives us the value of five. Then we go to six. 
3 is less than or equal to 6. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. We have nothing in this array, but we do have a 3 here. So we need to add that. So we add that first, then we add the candidate. And finally, 7. Yes, 3 is less than or equal to 7. 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. So we have 2 and 2 in here. So we need to add that to the start of the array. We get to 6. So the only sums that are going to have 6 as a candidate within them are values that are equal to 6 or greater than 6. So all of these can stay empty. And then once we get to the sum of 6, we know that the candidate 6 goes into the sum of 6 exactly once. So we can add just 6. And then we move to 7. 6 is less than or equal to 7. 7 minus 6 is equal to 1. There is nothing within any of these arrays. So 6 cannot make 7 just on its own. So this stays empty. And then 7 is empty all the way up to the sum of 7. Upon which point 7 goes into 7 exactly once. So we can add that into this array here. And then our answer is going to be this section here. So when we return this, we'll get 224 and 7, which is the output that this question is looking for. Okay, so let's dive into the code and see what this looks like. Let's start out by making sure that the candidates are sorted because this is only going to work if the candidates themselves are sorted in ascending order. So candidates dot sort a b a minus b. Let's create the DP array, which is going to be an array of arrays of arrays. And then let's loop through sum. So sum is going to be less than or equal to target. Sum plus plus. So we start at zero because we need to have that zero case within our DP. DP at sum is going to be initially set as an empty array. We're going to have an array called combine, which is going to combine all the potential solutions for a given target. Then let's loop through the candidates. So i is equal to zero. i is less than candidates dot length. And here we can add the additional check. So we need to make sure that the candidates is always less than or equal to sum, because if it's greater than, we cannot make the sum from that particular candidate. So candidates at i is less than or equal to sum, i plus plus. So if sum is equal to candidate, candidates at i, then we know that that sum can be made exactly from one of candidates. So we just push that into combine. Else, so we need to check the previous values within dp and loop through those. So let prev of dp sum minus candidates at i, we need to stop duplicates. So if candidates at i is greater than or equal to prev prev dot length minus one. So if it's greater than the last value within prev, then we can add it to combine. Otherwise, forget about it. So we make a copy of prev and we also add in candidates at i. Then we need to set dp of sum equal to combine. So we update the DP of sum to equal the values which we have pushed into combine. And then we can just return DP at target. So the value we're looking for. Let's give this a run. Submit it. And there you go. 